Okay, continuing with time-based media. So we have our sketch, our plan, and this is what we call the keyframes. And I'm limiting you to only nine square keyframes. I'm also limiting you to a square format that is nine, or I'm sorry, eight by eight inches. You will see that here at 100 pixels per inch. That's because animation should be at screen resolution, right? So once I know my plan, now I can start building assets. And if I know I'm going to have a background, and some of you want black backgrounds, some of you want white backgrounds, some of you want colored backgrounds, and some of you want landscape backgrounds, then I can immediately build that asset. So what do I do? I'm going to start a new Photoshop file. We haven't usually done it this way. We've usually brought in a sketch into the computer and then modified that sketch, grew it into the resolution we needed. But the problem with our sketch is it has nine different versions of our project at different times. That's time-based media. So instead, we're going to make a new file in Photoshop. Same thing in Photo P. We're going to make this 8 inches by 8 inches by 100 pixels per inch. Those of you who create social media campaigns, video content, uh, this is a fairly good standard resolution to use. It works for most platforms. That's because it looks good on computer screens, on TVs, and on phones, right? That 100 pixels per inch. High def screens can sometimes be about 120 pixels per inch. 4K or, or more than that, right? But this is exceeds the standard screen resolution of 72 by about a quarter. So we have this 8 inch by 8 inch, you know, white square. The next thing you're going to do is use your move tool and click on your rulers. And if your rulers aren't turned on, hit command R. And if your rulers don't show inches, you go up to Photoshop settings, units and rulers, and you're just going to set the ruler units to inches. That is not the default. The default is as pixels, but we don't speak pixel as well as we speak inches. So we want to see all eight inches. Then I'm going to use that move tool, click on the ruler, and just drag to the sides of this eight inch square. This is my shooting frame. This is what appears on screen, right? And instead of building extra space around it, like we did for our first two assignments, we want to know that there is extra space around it. It's just going to be hidden from us. So what do I mean by that? Now I'm going to start finding my assets. And one of my assets is this background, right? So I'm going to open up this Creaturescape project. And I have this background. And I have my creature. And if I look at my sketch and I say, oh, okay, this is the, the first frame. All I have to do is get rid of the creature from this project. Good. But I want to think of all the things that might change in this frame as it goes on. And I actually don't show much changing. I don't even show that moon moving. But if I wanted to animate that moon, that would mean I don't want to flatten it all into one image, right? It would mean I'd want to take that moon separately, even if it just meant doing this, like grabbing the moon from the moon layer and kind of putting it on its own layer, right? But for my story, because I have other ambitions, I'm going to keep the story to just a background plate. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. And there's a few ways I can do that. I'm just going to select all of these. And then I'm just going to say layer merge layers or command E. And since I didn't hold down option, it didn't do it as an extra. It just merged them all into one layer. So now I have two basic assets. I have my background and I have a character. But this is th almost 13 inches, if I look at its image size, by 300. 
So what I want this to be is 8 inches by 8 inches by 100. All right. So now what do we have? We have two files. One that's open in Photoshop. That's 8 inches by 8 inches, just a, a white background. And one that is open in Photoshop, it's 8 inches by 8 inches. They're both by 100 pixels per inch. I like Photoshop because it shows you that right in the lower corner. And as long as I save these as different names, so I'm going to save this as, <coughs> excuse me, my assignment 3, reference for animation. That's what I put last class. I'm going to change this to calling it my assets file. So this is my treasure chest of all the components I need to build my story, my assets file. This is why you need to do that. What if I, in my storyboard, zoomed in or had a panning shot? Then I would go back. Minimize this. You're going to need to organize a lot of, between a lot of things with this assignment. Then I'm going to go to that Photoshop file, open it again. This is before I shrunk it down, right? And now I'm going to keep it at full size. And I'm going to say layer merge visible. But this time, I'm just going to be on my top most visible layer. Have that selected. Hold down option and then say layer merge visible. This time it's non-destructive. It gives me a merged layer here. I'm going to select all of it by either using my rectangular marquee and having it stick to the guides. That's why the guides are really helpful. Or shortcuts help. I can just do select all as long as I'm on that layer. And that shortcut is command A. So command A to select it all. Command C to copy it all. You can also find that under edit. And then I go to my assets and I say command V to paste it in. Now what's interesting is I pasted in something at a different resolution than the rest of my assets. So if I hit Command T, I can see the potential for this background now. So this is a background plate that I might use for panning. To get to where I want to, you know. So that's what I mean by the, the information is there, it just might be off frame. And if you ever need to find it, there we go. You can always hit Command T and that will show you what those parameters are. I talked about going backwards. So if I want my frame to be this, and I want to zoom in from the whole image to this image, I start with this. And then I duplicate that background. And then I hit Command-T on the duplicate, and I hold down Option. Actually, I can do it a few ways. But if I'm going to shrink, I'm going to hold down Option and, sh and uh, start scrolling it down. Right? I'm going to see how much feels right for the first shift. Then I hit Return. So the first shift would be from this to this. Does that feel too fast? Does that feel too slow? If it feels too fast, then I want to go slower, and I want to duplicate it, and then do Command-T, and then decide on a small increment, and I use guides for this, usually by the inch, and I set guides, actually going two inches at a time here. That's why it's nice to have those rulers. Now I'm going to use those guides, and each time I transform it, I'm just going to move it holding down Option to that next marker. Hit Return. Duplicate it. Command-T. Hold down Option. What Option does is it is shrinking it from all sides at once. Right? But I only have to control it from one folder. Hold down Option. Duplicate it. Command-T. Hold down Option. Oops, I hold down, didn't hold down option. Hold down option. Until it gets right there, right? And now, in four frames, 
I've shown that panning. And it's not only panning, it's also shrinking. So how long will it take for me to get all the way to fitting the image on? Well, I'll show you. Going two inches at a time, which is probably about as slow as you can go in a GIF animation. Because we're not going to end up with 24 frames per second, generally, on this project. It's only us doing it. We don't have unlimited time. But I would duplicate it, Command-T, and now what I start doing is holding down Option, going from the side in to that line, and then moving that down to the corner. So what does that look like? I'll get rid of the guides. It, it's just a change. It's a change from it panning and zooming to now just zooming. So it's panning, which means moving, and zooming. It's zooming out, though it's hard to tell with the pan. And now it's just starting to zoom out. Again, Command-J, then Command-T. And I want to turn on my guides. And notice, uh, this is something that happens too. Very annoying in animation. So I can see in the window that there's a little bit of empty space. That means I didn't sync it right with the guide, which I can't tell because as the frames layer up, I can see what's behind it. So I need to fix that really quickly, set that down, and then also set down the duplicate. OK. So you want to kind of catch these things as you go. And you can always test it just by using this eyeball. Animating in Photoshop is just programming this eyeball. Turning it on and off and saying how long it should stay on. OK, so now I have my guides. This is a duplicate. I hit Command-T. I hold down Option. I move it in the two inches, and then I nest it back to that corner. Why do I still need to always do that measurement? Because if I do it from this corner, it's not going to be the same proportion. I just want to make sure it's nested in there. You'll get those little pink lines when it's like touching the guides. And then duplicate it again. This isn't even part of my animation. Right? <laughs> this is, I could put it at the beginning. I could start with a panning shot and a zoom. But this is just to show you kind of how methodical it is. And this is the most annoying kind of in between, right? These, these background movements. But it's good to know. So the problem is if I just, if I don't hold down option and I do it like this, I don't get to control the sequencing as much. But zooms are more forgiving than pans. So I'm going to, as long as I don't slow it down, I can speed it up, and that should be fine. So it goes from this to this, but you see how that's a real slowdown? So now, I'm going to move it two at a time. Two at a time. I can test it at any time just by using the eyeballs. Duplicate it again, use the guides, and it'll be the last two. Getting it into frame. Okay, so now I've got all of these frames. All of those are, are different shots in the camera that have to be played in sequence to get the camera move. Right? Why did I show that? Well, because it can be played in either direction, right? So if I want to start my animation here and then zoom in, I can do that. But I had to build it backwards. Otherwise, if I started here and then zoomed in on this, my resolution would get worse and worse each time. Does that make sense? So you have to kind of think it through.